Hey guys, we're here with another Foundations video where we are going to talk about using compression as an effect on electric guitar. If you've owned a compression pedal for a decent amount of time, you honestly may still be wondering what it even does. It's not something that's very easily heard and that can make it difficult to know whether you're using it effectively or not. So in this video, we're going to talk about what the heck compression is, why it's helpful, and how to achieve a tastefully compressed sound. Compression is an effect that attenuates or reduces a signal that passes over a certain predetermined gain threshold. Basically, if your guitar signal is louder than the pedal thinks it should be, it will turn it down. And how much and how fast it's turned down depends on the settings on the pedal. One thing to know is that most guitar compression pedals are modeled after really popular studio compression gear with many more controls and tweakable parameters. And most compression pedals have maybe half of those controls, but they typically have the most important ones available to you. Most compression pedals have three very important settings, sustain, attack, and volume. Sustain is most helpful as our threshold control or the level at which the compressor will actually start attenuating your guitar signal once it reaches it. Generally speaking, as sustain increases, your threshold level will decrease and overall compression increases. I'll say that again. Generally speaking, as sustain increases, your threshold level will decrease and overall compression increases. It also affects the release time of the compression or how long it will take for the original signal to get back to its original level. I'll show you what this would sound like when the sustain is at a medium level and I'll move it around and we can make some observations about what happens when sustain is changed. So here's our uncompressed signal without the pedal engaged. Turn it on now. So we can hear quite a bit of gain has dipped off. Here's no more sustain. So it's pretty similar to our original signal. There's definitely some gain reduction though, and it feels a little tighter. I'm going to increase it a little bit. You can hear that it's kind of thickening up to our ears. It's definitely squeezing it down a lot more too. And when I lift up my hand off the fretboard, you can kind of hear the signal kind of pump in and out as it's releasing the, the compressor. I like that. And obviously you can tell too that increased sustain brings noise up quite a bit as well. So that's something to think about. So here's original. Compressed with a lot of sustain. That's so quite a lot of compression. So those are some things to think about as we're adjusting sustain. Our second control to think about is attack. And attack will determine how much time it will take for the compressor to attenuate the signal. Medium to slow attack times will allow sound at the beginning of your playing, like picking and strumming sounds, to pass through before the compressor actually grabs them. And fast attack times, on the other hand, will result in more of a squashed sound. And if you have enough compression dialed in, you'll really hear a difference in how the guitar sounds without that front end action present. Let me show you how our signal would sound with some different attack times, and we'll kind of compare and contrast like we did with sustain as well. So here's our original signal again. And here's just a medium attack. Okay, so we still get quite a bit of our picking and strumming sound. It's curved just a little bit though. Let me go all the way to the fastest attack time. We can kind of hear how that sounds. You can hear right away that the picking sound from the guitar signal is, is cut out quite a bit. Here's the original. Just compressed. So it's really squashed. It's grabbing those front sounds really, really quickly. And here's the slowest release or attack. So you can hear there's kind of a, a, a 
pumping effect too, so the compressor is kicking in a lot later than when the attack is really fast. So those are some things to think about as we adjust our attack time. Our third control is volume, and volume is a really important control that will help us add back some gain to the overall signal after compression happens. This is a really critical setting to listen to because it can be tempting to believe that our compression is really dialed in when it just feels bigger and thicker when the pedal is engaged. And that may just be because the volume setting is making it louder overall. And our brains are usually going to think that the louder signal is the better sounding one, if we're honest, and that might not always be true. I think the best use of this control is getting the outputs of the engaged and bypassed sounds to be as close as possible to maintain a level sound going into the rest of our effects and to our audio engineer. And if you need a clean volume boost, just bump up the master volume on your amp and that'll take care of it for you. Some pedals also have other helpful features like blend and tone controls that we'll talk about briefly in a little bit and those can help you further fine tune your compressed sound but aren't totally critical. If your compressor doesn't have these things, don't worry. But sustain, attack, and volume are going to be the important settings for you to have available. So now that we know a little bit more about what compression actually is, let's talk about why it's even important. Like I mentioned earlier, compression isn't an effect that's always easily heard when engaged, and that can be a good and a bad thing. It can be bad because it can be hard to tell whether we are using it effectively or not, but it's also a good thing because we shouldn't be using it to drastically change our sound. That's what we change guitars and amps for. We should be using compression to bring more focus to our sound. If there's a lot of harsh high end as we pick and strum, we can quicken our attack time and tame those highs up front. On another hand, if we have single coil guitars like this one that sound really loose and jangly and don't have much sustain, we can add a little bit of compression to glue our overall sound together and add some sustain to our pickups. And lastly, if our guitar has some strings that seem louder than the others and could really use a setup, a little bit of compression can help even out the output of the strings. If your guitar and amp combination is already really smooth and has nice sustain, you really might not need any compression. I think for most players, especially those who are playing single coil guitars like Telecasters or Stratocasters, compression can be really helpful. So we have established why a guitar like this one might need some compression, and I suspect that that is the case. So let's dial this pedal in with just the guitar going into the amp. And the first thing I am always going to do before I try and dial in compression is simply play and listen for things that I might want to fix. So here's my bypass signal. Played it a little bit earlier. I really dig in. I kind of hear a, a high sparkly ringy thing going on that I might want to grab up front. So that's something I'm going to be listening for. Um, another thing too, this might be kind of hard to explain, but it, it doesn't really seem like all of my middle strings are really working well together. Some of them seem like they're sticking out a little more uh, than the others and definitely a little more than some of my higher strings. So I'm gonna want to tame my high end up front and just achieve a more together sound overall as I try and dial in this pedal. So the first thing that I'm gonna try to dial in is my sustain. So just my overall compression level. So what I'm gonna be thinking about is how much noise do I wanna add into this signal? Cause this guitar obviously has some power issues, grounding issues that are contributing a lot of noise. I think I might just want be a little bit less. You can kind of hear it pumping just a little bit. But I think that's starting to sound pretty good. So once I have my sustain where I want, I have some nice ring. Actually, let's let's 
hear how much sustain is added to the pickup. So you can hear right then it dies out really quickly. When I engage the pedal, strum this chord, and already I have so much more sustain with these single coil pickups, and that's really helpful for these types of guitars. Um, the second thing that I want to dial in is my attack time, so shaping the characteristics of the compression. And I typically start with my attack knob all the way to its fastest setting, and then I will slow it down until I hear enough of that front end that I want to hear. So that's obviously too fast. And again, I'm just going a little bit, getting closer. see if that high end is gone. So there's that ring in there. When I engage it. Still kind of in there. So I'm going to speed it up just a hair. I feel like that's, that's at a pretty good level. Um, the third thing that I'm going to do, and this is a very, very important setting, is like we talked about earlier, adjust the volume so my bypassed and engaged uh, signals are very close in volume. And so if I disengage it and then engage it, I've lost a lot of volume. So I'm going to grab this volume knob and I'm just going to turn it up a little bit and I'm just going to keep comparing until I get pretty close. Still could probably use some more. that's pretty close so I'm pretty happy with that volume setting um, another thing that I want to talk about real quick with this pedal specifically that I really like is this blend knob over here and this is not in all compressor pedals but what it does is it allows me to get a compression sound dialed in on the pedal and then blend it with my original signal so that it's not uh, completely compressed. Right now for this whole video I've had the blend knob all the way up which, me which means that the, compress the compression pedal is the only thing uh, that we're hearing. We're not hearing like a parallel set of signals and so what I typically do is dial in my compression sound and then I will um, turn this blend knob back until I like the, the balance between my compressed sound and uh, original signal. So this is just the guitar, no compression. Here's a little bit more compression. So actually, I feel like this sounds much more natural than completely compressed, right? So that's a really, really helpful tool. So if you're shopping for a compression pedal and you can get one with a blend knob, that's really helpful as well. Some of them also have tone knobs that allow you to add in a little bit of EQ um, after they're engaged as well, so that might be helpful to you. So now that we've dialed in most of the sound, let's hear what it sounds like engaged one last time, bypassed, and compare them. So here's the compressed sound, bypassed, engaged, So to me, the compressed sound definitely sounds more tight and focused and sounds pretty close to the original output volume and has more sustain as well. One more important thing to think about with compression is where you put it in relation to other effects on your pedal board. When I use compression, I always have it as the very first pedal in my chain, and there are just a couple of reasons for that. The first is that because I use compression to focus my sound, I want that focused sound to go to the rest of my effects, unaffected by an overdrive pedal that I may kick on and off throughout the course of a set. And if I'm constantly changing what goes into the compressor, the compression itself is probably going to change a little bit, and I don't want that to happen. The second is that compression can definitely add some noise to a rig, as y'all heard earlier, um, with a lot of pedals, and I don't want any pedal noise or guitar noise that's fed into the compressor to be turned up when the compressor is engaged. And that would cause a lot of problems for me and my audio engineer and the rest of the band 
for that matter. If you have had trouble with compression in the past or are thinking about adding compression to your rig in the future, we hope that this video has provided some insight into how it can be used effectively and why it's a great tool. And if you have any questions about this content, please feel free to reach out to us at worship at grace-bible.org. We'll see you next time.